Hi, everyone. Welcome to lecture two of the iOS course. Uh, my name is Gonzalo. I was introduced in the previous lecture. And if you don't remember me, I'm a junior studying CS and I've been on AppDev for five semesters, three of which were iOS and two of which are currently backend. So I know a bit about both sides. Um, and we're going to be learning about UI kit and auto layout today. Uh, UI kit is going to allow us to use the skills that we learned in the previous homework. Uh, where we're learning about Swift syntax, uh, we're going to be able to actually create uh, phone elements that you see on your phone every day. And auto layout is going to help us position them around the phone screen. Uh, so to start off with some logistics, uh, the homework was due tomorrow, right? Uh, we'll talk about grading in a sec, uh, but the deadline for enrolling in this course is March 12. We said that it was March 15 in the past, so uh, be wary of that. If you're watching this video and you haven't joined the Slack yet, that means that you enrolled and you did not do the application. So you need to email us because we won't know to invite you to the Slack or to add you to the CMS. So you won't be getting any up-to-date information and we, you won't be able to turn in your assignments. So you have to email us to take this course. Uh, and for resources, they're always gonna be posted on the website. So you can always check there. But then again, the Slack is always going to have the most up-to-date information. Uh, our grading policy is that we're, you're, you're allowed one project drop, but that excludes the first one, which was the one that was due yesterday, and the final project, which is the hack challenge. And if you need any extensions, like including if you didn't turn in your project in time yesterday, you need to request us like 24 hours in advance and you need to create a group chat with me and your Lam in it and give us a reason why you need an extension. Uh, if you didn't turn in your assignment yesterday and you need to take some late days, you can check our policy on the website as for a review of anything I just mentioned now. So let's start with some review of lecture one. So let's talk about structs and classes. So say task is a struct and we want to know what gets printed out uh, to the console in this case. So task A is a task that has uh, the title study for prelim. And then task B is set equal to task A. And then we set task B's title to buy food. So if I were to print task A, I'm going to get study for prelim. And task B is going to be buy food. And that's because task uh, being a struct means that task is a value type. And that means that when I set task B equal to task A, I'm creating a copy of task A and setting it equal to task B. Now that's different when we're talking about task being a class, because in this case, task A is going to be by food and so is task B. And the reason for that is because when we set task B equal to task A, task B is now a reference to task A. So whenever I do task B.title, I'm changing task A's title and that means they're both going to have the same title. You might have encountered this when you're doing the homework yesterday, because if you try to do an if var for section 2.5, trying to create the year dictionary, uh, you would notice that you'd fail the test case where you add another student. And that's because if you look in the Swift documentation, you'll see that dictionaries are a value type. So if you were to set uh, your unwrapped value to be equal to the dictionary's value, you were actually creating a copy of it. So appending to that list wouldn't have done anything. Uh, now let's take, at another, let's take a look at another case. Uh, in this case, we want to know what happens when you run this code. So I have a nil uh, optional integer. I'm setting b equal to that integer, and then I'm unwrapping b, and I'm going to print b if it's not nil, or I'll print b if it is nil. Uh, so in this case, you're actually going to get a compile error because you can't assign uh, optional value to an int. So while you can set an int equal to an optional value, or actually, yeah, you can't do that. So if I have an optional value, uh, if I set it equal to five, if it's an optional int, then I can do that. But I can't set an int equal to nil because only optional values can be nil. Uh, this will be important uh, when you when we start doing uh, UI kit 
because if you look through the documentation, you'll see that there are many optional values. For example, uh, if we want to set the text of something, there could be text or there might not be text, but you can still always set strings equal to that text attribute because you can do that with optionals, but not the other way around. So let's start talking about UIKit. Uh, UIKit is just a framework that Apple gives you that lets you work with those core objects that you will see on your screen and the screen itself. And by framework, it just means that there's a lot of code uh, that you don't see, right? And you just work with the higher level of it. So what are these core objects? Well, you have basically two, you have the view controller, which is the screen. Uh, it basically manages the hierarchy of all your sub views. And every single app has at least one view controller and that's called the root view controller. And we're gonna use that to set up our Xcode uh, when we actually start coding in our demo. And views are basically all the little elements that you see on your screen. Sometimes you might see an image that's usually in a UI image view. You might be pressing a button, which is a UI button. Uh, we have text sometimes, which is a UI label. You might be able to type in a text box, which is actually the UI text field. And uh, there's other cases. And these are all subclasses of UI view. And you can also instantiate a UI view, which is if you wanted to make say like a, a square or something like that. And we'll see that today as well. So in this phone screen, you can actually identify what some of these UI views are, uh, or yeah, some of these views. So uh, you see bar express, that is a UI label, because that is text. UI image view is that image in the back. You have that calendar button, which is a UI button. And you also have that text view. So a UI label is like just one line of text usually, while UI text view can have lots of text. And now that we know about views, we want to also know how to position them. And we do that with auto layout. So what is auto layout? It lets us position and change the size of views, right? And this is relative to other screens. And this is important because one way that you can possibly position things is with a frame-based a frame based approach. And the issue with that is that when we make an application, we want it to work for all kinds of iPhones. And every like iPhones have different sizes, right? Which is why uh, positioning things relative to one another is useful because it lets us make uh, responsive apps. And this is very good if you want to support multiple types of phones. And every view has a set of anchors. Uh, so if we look at these anchors, uh, every view has a width and height, right? There's also a center to every uh, view. And you have your top and bottom anchors. And you also have your leading and your trailing anchors, which you probably can't tell which because my camera is like reversed. But uh, we have a picture right here. So your center X anchor and your center Y anchor represent your middle. If you're to uh, constrain your view using these uh, two, you can actually center your views. Uh, you have your height and your width anchor. The leading is going to be on the left while the trailing is on the right. And then you have your top and your bottom. And then uh, that was for views. You can also do the same thing for view controllers. Uh, so same as before, top and bottom anchor, you have your leading and your trailing anchor and then your height and your width. So when you're actually uh, adding constraints to your views, you're going to want to take into account to where the anchors are for your view controller. Uh, and then you have some uh, UI components here on this view controller as well. For example, you have the image with the UI image view, you have humble beginnings, that's a UI label, and then you also have the pause button UI, uh, that's a UI button. So I keep saying constraints, but what exactly is that? So you have anchors, but when I want to constrain something, that's a rule that I'm going to put on that anchor. So for example, uh, if I want to say that I want the top of the song title to be X pixels from the bottom of the album cover image, you'll see that's the green arrow in the middle of the screen. I need to set a constraint on that. Uh, and one special case with constraints is that when you're trying to constrain things to the top or the bottom of your screen, you need to be careful because uh, some phones have things in the way, right? As you'll see in the next slide, uh, 
So for example, uh, if I set it equal to the top anchor, you see how this is an iPhone 11, you have that little uh, like oval shape and you also have that, uh, the bar on the bottom. We don't want to actually start there. We want to use safe area layout guide, which is going to tell us you know, where the top anchor is after all of those things. So that's what we want to use when we're doing top or bottom anchor. This is for newer phones Say so you have an iPhone 7, you're going to get, uh, you know, there's no little widget, so you're good there. So it will, uh, those values will actually change based on the phone that you're simulating on. So uh, let's come up, let's, let's do some examples so that this is more like concrete. So let's say I want to create a constraint to set the top edge of view two to be 20 pixels offset from view one's bottom edge. Well, if I want to actually set a constraint with that, what I need to do is I'm going to, just as I said it in English, I want view two's top anchor to be offset, right? So I need to create a constraint now because I want it to be offset from something. And uh, we're going to use this function in this case. I want it to be offset from view one's bottom edge. So I want to make it equal to view one dot bottom anchor and I want to offset it by 20. Now uh, let's say we want to do it off the top of a screen. Now keep into account that we want to use safe area layout guide so that we don't have any issues with any extra widgets that might be in the way. So uh, to do that, we're going to do similar to before view one dot top anchor and you want to constrain it to view dot safe area layout guide dot top anchor and then offset it by 20. So let's just get started with the demo. So uh, this is the first time you're going to actually be creating an Xcode project. So uh, what you want to do is you want to open the Xcode and you want to create a new Xcode project. Uh, it should open like this. Uh, make sure that your platform is iOS and that you have app selected. You want to click on next and for product name, I'm going to call it demo one. This can be whatever. And then uh, you can have a storyboard uh, enabled, even though we're not going to use storyboard, leave it as storyboard. Uh, and then you want UI kit app delegate. You want it to be uh, in Swift and you can go next. Uh, and I will have it on my desktop. So you can see it's going to appear right there. And cool. All right, here we are. So uh, what you want to pay attention to is this left side, because whenever you create a new uh, project, you're going to see this stuff. So uh, we have our app delegate uh, here. We're not really going to do anything. Uh, now, it depends on what version of Xcode you have that you might not see scene delegate and we will want to do some setup in app delegate. So I'll get to that in a bit. Um, the reason we do setup in scene delegate, if you have that now, is because uh, after iOS 13, I believe, uh, there uh, is an iPad, I think it's iPad OS, where uh, you can have multiple screens active at the same time and those are different scenes, right? So they added this to account for that. So we'd want to be doing setup in this file if you have scene delegate. Uh, we'll get back to that though. We have our view controller, which is where we're going to be doing most of our uh, code. Uh, well, all of our code today, actually, uh, because we're going to work on a single screen today. And then we also have a main.storyboard. So storyboard is a easy way to develop apps, although it's not really the best way to work on apps uh, when you're working with multiple people, because you'd probably be using a, a source, a version source control like GitHub. And this isn't really the best to work with people on because Whenever you do conflicting things, you're gonna get these merge conflicts if you use GitHub before that, you know, are annoying. So we're not gonna be using storyboard in this class. Programmatic is the best way so that you don't have to deal with all those weird things. Uh, then we have an assets folder. This is where we're going to be putting images. Uh, you can also set your app icon over here. Uh, launch screen, that's storyboard. Uh, this is fine. Uh, this is actually just the first thing that appears. So this we can leave, uh, leave here. We're going to get rid of main.storyboard and info.plist. Uh, 
you really only need to go here uh, if you know what you're doing. Uh, I've used it in the past when I want to actually use custom fonts. You have to do some setup here, but that's really something you just search up. So this is not really of a concern. Although we are going to be doing some stuff here today uh, because we want to get rid of the storyboard. So uh, what you want to do is you want to delete the storyboard and click move to trash. And then you want to go to info.plist. And what you want to do is you want to look for application scene manifest. And then you keep clicking down until you get to these three. And then where it says storyboard name, you want to click on the minus and we get rid of it. So just to test that this worked properly, we click on play, or actually before we click on play, uh, let's make sure that we have our iPhone type set correctly. So right now mine is an iPod touch seventh generation. We'll set it to iPhone 11 Pro Max. And let's click start. So here we get an iPhone simulator. I'll move my face down here. And here we go. So there we go. So now we have a black screen, right? Which means that we properly did this because when you remove the storyboard, there's nothing on your screen, right? We haven't, we don't have a root view controller, which is something that we need in every app. We haven't set anything up yet. So that's what we're gonna do next. So to actually set up your window, let's go to scene delegate first. And then you see a lot of functions here. We just wanna work on this one. So if you actually read these comments, it says use this method to optionally configure and attach the UI window window to the provided UI window scene scene. And that's actually what we want to do to set this up. Uh, and you want to do this if you're not using the storyboard. So uh, we have a guardlet here. Uh, let's actually use this scene that's being unwrapped. So if there is a scene, we want to store it in window scene. And after this, now let's make a window. And we'll type in UI window and we want to use autocomplete. That's our best friend. I want to use window scene and I'm going to type in window scene here. Now the next thing that you want to do is you want to get self.window. You want to get the window and you want to set this equal to window. And that's going to associate the window of the app with this window right now. And then the last two things you want to do are you want to get the Windows root view controller and we want to set that equal to the view controller that we're going to be working with, which is viewcontroller.swift. To access that, you just type in view controller with the parentheses after it to create it. And then we're going to want to make the screen visible. So we want to make key and visible. So uh, let's try running that. And we should expect to see a white screen. And okay, it looks like we got an issue. So this means that, okay, so there's an issue with the storyboard. I actually forgot to remove one extra thing. Uh, so removing the storyboard can be problematic. So there are two steps, you want to delete it you want to remove it from here. And one thing I forgot to do is you also want to click here. You want to remove this. Let's try that again. Okay, it looks like our screen is still black. Uh, so let's go in view controller and let's try to make the screen blue. Uh, we can do this with view.background color equals to blue. Uh, Let's see what happens now. Great, all right, so this is working fine. Uh, so we set it up correctly. Um, let's go back to scene delegate. And, and the, reason, the reason it was actually appearing black is because uh, there was no background color associated with this view. So it was just going to appear black. So by setting it blue, we, can, we could have set it white. We can run it again. And now it's white, so we're good. So, uh, I'll just leave it white for now. Um, for any of you that have an outdated version of Xcode, uh, it's very similar to set up app delegate as we do to scene delegate. And what we want to do here, I'm just going to copy and paste everything after uh, the window scene. 
uh, now we're not using window scenes. Instead, we're going to actually get the frame. And what we want to do is we want to set the window frame to the bounds of our screen. And to do that, you want to use UI screen dot main dot bounce. And then you want to remove this. And then that should be fine. But because uh, we're using scene delegate, uh, we can just comment this out. And to comment this out, we can just highlight everything and then do command in the comment button and it does that for you. Uh, let's run it to make sure everything's still fine. And okay, everything looks good. So uh, what we're going to actually be making today for this demo, uh, we're going to go on Figma and this is actually how you're going to do your assignments. So we're going to make a better version of the daily check. This is very innovative. All you have to do is press one button. So you have, you start with this and if you don't have COVID, you press it and the screen turns green, sends it to Cornell. Uh, we're not gonna do the networking, we're just front end, we don't have to worry. Well, we do have to worry about networking. You'll, we'll get to that much later in the course, but for now we're just going to make a, a dummy app and essentially you press this and the screen will turn green and we're going to get a little check mark up here. So uh, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, okay, what do I see? Well, I see, for example, uh, I have this white thing over here and it just looks like a rectangle. So that looks like a UI view. So let's actually start with that. And I'm actually going to switch in inspect mode because when you're doing the homework, you will be on inspect mode. So uh, let's just start with actually creating a UI view. So um, to do that, what we want to do is outside of view did load, we want to let, and let's call this, uh, let's just say, uh, let's go back in the Figma. It just looks like the background. So uh, do background view, it doesn't matter what you call this. And we're going to set this equal to UI view. And so this is now storing a UI view, the error should go away. So let's start typing after here. So what do we want to do with this view? Um, well, it's white, so we can set it equal to we can set his background color equal to white. And we can try adding that to the sub view for now. And what we want to do is we want to actually add it to the screen. Uh, but if we add a white view to the screen, we're not gonna actually be able to see it. So how about we change the color of the background? Let's start with that, that'd probably be better. Uh, so if I click here, this is the color of my background uh, and this is an hex. Uh, this isn't very nice to work with. Uh, you need to go on Stack Overflow and copy over something that makes it nice to work with hex. So we're just going to click here, switch to RGB. So we have 179, 27, 27. So let's actually set white to that color. So to do that, we want to use UI color and then we're going to go to one of these, uh, we'll choose this one where it says red, green, and blue. And these take in values from zero to one. And because colors are from zero to 255, whatever color we put here, we want to divide it by 255. So we have 179, 27, and 27. So we want to do 179 divided by 255, 27 divided by 255, 27 divided by 255. And then the alpha is one, so we can do that. Uh, so let's just start this and see what happens. Cool. So now the color changed to what we wanted it to. Uh, you'll also notice that even though we changed the background views color to white, nothing actually appeared because we just didn't add it to the sub view. Uh, and to actually add it to this view, right? Uh, we want to do view, which is a reference to this uh, view controller, this view controller's uh, view and we want to add sub view and we want to put in the background view. So we can try doing that and we'll see what happens. And right now we still don't see anything. And the reason for that is because we just didn't specify any constraints to this UI views anchors. It's just, you know, non-existent. And what we want to do now is we want to actually give it some width and height. And we want to constrain it so that it actually 
uh, is in the place that we want it to be. So to do constraints, uh, we want to use what we did in the slide, but before we actually do that, we want to type in NS layout constraints. And we want to do, uh, we want to activate them. And we're going to pass in a list. And now here's where we want to type in our constraints. So if we go to Figma, uh, what we want to do is, well, how we would do this on the homework is I would click on the white and I would mouse over to the red and it just, and it tells us our constraints here. So it looks like uh, it's 30 from the top and the bottom and it's 27 from the left and the right. We also have the height and with here, it's 260 pixels and 836 pixels. And we also have this radius. Uh, this is actually because the view is rounded and I'll show you how to do that in a bit. But first let's actually constrain it and get it to show. So uh, let's say I want to, uh, we'll start with the top and the bottom and then the left and the right. So we want to get the background views top anchor and we want to constrain it. We want it to be equal to the top and offset by a bit. So we want to do view dot. Now remember, this is an iPhone 11. So we want to do safe area layout guide. And it's always good practice to always do that so that it works for even lower, uh, lower phones. Uh, and we want it to be the top anchor. And Figma said that we want it to be 30 pixels off. So let's do 30. Now we do the same thing for the bottom anchor. Uh, okay, our mouse is acting up. Uh, we can do bottom anchor. And now, because uh, whenever we're offsetting things, the origin uh, or whenever we're offsetting things, uh, whenever I put a positive number for top and bottom anchor, the offset is going to be from the top of the screen. So if I want to actually inset it or offset backwards, I would need to put a negative sign. And the reason I'm getting error here is because it expects a comma because this is a comma separate list. You can just click fix or, uh, fix or you can make sure to put commas. So, uh, now we have the top and the bottom anchor, but if we were to run this now, we shouldn't see anything still because we haven't defined its width. And because it has no width, you can't show anything. It can be something like, it can be tall, but without any width, it's just a very thin column and you're not gonna see anything. Uh, so we can do the same thing with our, you just copy this or my mouse doesn't want to work, so let's just paste twice. Um, we can do a leading anchor now. And we can do, uh, and we're going to get an issue here because we want this top anchor to actually be leading anchor two. So this can be leading anchor. And we want this to be our right or trailing anchor. And we'll set this to trailing anchor two. Okay, now let's go back and Figma, make sure that those constants are right. It looks like they're 27. So lead anchor is on the one, the one on the left. And so we want that to be 27 and this will be negative 27. So let's run that and see how that works. Or we still have an issue, forgot to put a comma. Don't forget that. And we still see nothing. And the reason this happens is because whenever we're using NS layout constraints, we want to type in background view dot and we type in translates and we're going to see translates auto resizing mask into constraints. This is very important to do. Uh, I think I forgot to mention that in the lecture. So always remember to do this if you have constraint problems and you want to type in false. Uh, so let's try that one more time. And okay, it looks like nothing is still appearing. Uh, let's see, so I have a top anchor equal to this. Oh, would you look at that? Top anchor and top anchor. So this has to be the bottom anchor. 
Otherwise, I'm not going to see anything. Let's try this again. That's much better. Okay, great. So now you see these are like very sharp, ugly edges. Uh, let's actually try changing it to be rounded like the Figma. So Figma tells me there's a radius of 25. And to do that in Swift, what you want to do is background view dot layer dot corner radius. So you might be asking yourself, you know, how am I supposed to know this? Well, you're not. The point is, the more you work on this, uh, the better you'll recognize what you're supposed to use. You'll remember how to use this stuff. So this just really comes with practice. So if you're kind of, you'll be slow in the beginning. So it's helpful to just be experimenting. You'll have to look at the documentation if you want to do some custom things. Might have to search up some Stack Overflow uh, posts. That's perfectly fine because you, you're not going to know how to just do something like that. Uh, so let's start this. And great, now it's rounded. So great, we have one part of the app done. Uh, that was our UI view. And now we want to do this. Now this is a UI label because it's on one line. And now to do this, before we actually do this one, uh, I'm going to, I'm starting to see that if I were to continue, I'm going to have to do a view setup and then constraints, view setup and constraints. And this view did load is going to get very big and it's going to be hard to find things if I have a very large project. So let's start to organize our code. Um, what I can do is I can make another function and let's call this setup views. So this is where I'm going to set up my views. And I'm going to put this here. And then I have another function called set of constraints. Now you can call these anything. These aren't uh, these aren't in the UI kit framework, so you're good there. And then we want to copy this if I can manage to copy this. Great. And there we go. All right. And now to make sure that these functions are actually called, we need to call them over here. So let's do set up constraints or set up views first, and then set up constraints. Let's remove this, and now let's make sure that this works. It still looks good, great. Now we can start with the actual UI label. So let's go back here. It says check-in, so let's just call it a, the title label. So this is a UI label. Now we instantiated it. Uh, so let's actually open the Figma. Uh, we don't see that we don't need to see the screen right now. So let's just minimize this. Okay. So what do we need over here? Let's make space for everything. Okay. So we see that we have uh, font size is forty eight. Or like to start off, this has text in it, right? So why not set the text first? So we can do title label dot text and let's set this equal to check in. Great. All right. What else do we need to do uh, that we can set the title labels uh, font size. We can try font. So I want to set it equal to font. Actually, there is no font size. But when you do it, when you make it equal to when you set the prop, the font property, uh, you want to call UI font and there's something called system font. And uh, this we can set to 48. So I'm not sure if the system font is Roboto. Uh, you don't really have to worry about font right now. Uh, like I said before, if you want to import custom fonts, you'd have to do some stuff with info.plist, but that's not really, we're not trying to focus on all of you learning like very specific things. So it's just fine to use system font in this case. Um, cool. Uh, let me actually see if I can Let's extend this a bit so the code is clear. Cool. Uh, great. Um, so we have the text, we have the font. Uh, I think that looks pretty good. Uh, let's just add this to the sub view and we'll make it title label. Oh, and we also need to always set uh, the translates auto remasking masks into constraints to false. Otherwise, nothing's going to show. And uh, we can run that. Let's bring this simulator up here. 
And now we're actually going to see it here. So we didn't constrain it. So its default location is going to be uh, where its leading and top anchor are constrained to the upper left corner of your phone. So uh, now we actually need to add constraints. Uh, now, the special thing about text is this wouldn't have happened with a UI view because a UI view is by default, uh, you know, it's width and height are zero. But the special thing about text is because you have text in them, you can kind of infer the height by its font size and you can infer its width from the amount of text in it. And also the height would depend on how many, uh, how many lines of text you have. So the special thing about text is that you don't need to actually define the height and width. So you don't need to have both a top and a bottom or just a top and a height. Uh, you can just um, move it into place and the height and the width will be taken care of. And sometimes this is preferable because uh, if you constrain it, uh, the text can flow in different ways. Uh, so let me actually just show you, uh, it'd be better to show you. Uh, so let's set it's do the same thing over here. Uh, so uh, we want the size, we want to set its constraints, not actually to the view controller, but it would be nicer if we set it equal to uh, these constraints because it makes more sense to have the title uh, be with respect, uh, be positioned relative to its background rather than the size of the phone. Because if we wanted to say, uh, move this down, right? And this were still positioned to this, that wouldn't be great. But if we actually positioned uh, this relative to this and we were to change the size, then the check-in would move along with it. So you need to take that into account when you're deciding how to use auto layout with your UI elements. So let's just click on check-in and let's check these out. So uh, it looks like all I need to do is uh, set its top anchor 20 off of the background view. So let's start with that. Uh, so I want my title label, I want its top anchor to be, uh, here we go, I want it to be equal to the background views top anchor and we want it to be off by 20. Great. Now, uh, what we can also do is we can set its leading and trailing to be equal to uh, 85. But uh, now the issue with that is if we were to set its leading and trailing equal to that, if we were to add more text, then the text would start flowing downward. And that's not great because I just wanted to resize based on how it is. So I can actually show you that. So let's set its leading constraint equal to say the background views leading anchor and let's make that 85. Don't forget the comma, it's another comma. And we'll set this trailing anchor like this. Okay, so uh, let's try that out. Okay, we got check in. Uh, let's add some more text. Some more text. And now let's run this. Okay, so it actually, it, okay, so it goes off the screen, which isn't great either. Uh, so we can actually click on this button right here. And this will help us actually visualize our app. So uh, if I were to click here and go to the right, you're going to actually see the view hierarchy. If I were to push this, I believe, or actually this one, you actually get to spread things out and you'll see what's going on behind the scenes. So this is the view hierarchy. This is the view controller and everything's being positioned off of that. You see that background is before the UI label because I added that to the sub view first. So that's how things get added on. So uh, let's go back inward. Uh, so we take a look at this. With more text, the size actually, uh, it actually went off the screen. So that's not really great. Uh, something that we would prefer is if it were to just grow out like this. 
So uh, what you can do to do that is uh, we can just, instead of constraining, it's leading to 85, which it is 85 up this way. What we can do is we can center it. And when we center it, uh, we will be able to get the text to go outward like that. And that would be preferable. So let's stop this. So instead of these two, how about let's try to do title label and we want it's now if we want to center it uh, horizontally, we want to use center X anchor. And uh, let's try, let's see, we want its background views center X anchor. And uh, we don't want to offset it. Uh, we just want it to be equal to the center. Um, let's try that and see how that looks like. Great, and that's what we wanted. Now, again, uh, it's still going off, right? So you need to take that into account. But this is the more preferable one because if I go back here, you see how it actually goes outward, right? So that's what we want. Uh, so let's go over here and let's do this. So there's just some special uh, cases with text. Uh, so this is fine for our purposes right now. This looks good. Let's go back in Figma. What else do we have? Now we have this. This is a UI text view because there are multiple lines. So uh, let's get started with this one. Uh, let's get that UI or I want to call this, let's say, uh, symptoms text view equal to the Y text view. Uh, and let's go over here. Symptoms text view. We want text to be equal to, and we've got a lot of text. So, uh, oh, great. Figma just does that for me. Oops. I've got to put some quotations for that string. Cool. Uh, what else do we want? One is font size to be 15. Uh, so let's try that. Uh, symptoms text view dot font is equal to UI font, that's system font, and it's 16. Uh, one other thing we do notice is that this is centered. Uh, to do that, we want to do symptoms dot text view dot. Uh, let's try cen not center, uh, font text alignment. Okay. So I don't always remember, but the autocomplete helps me. Uh, and to do this, if I press dot, I know it's taking in uh, something like this. So if I press a dot, uh, it will give me uh, options to do that. We want center. Uh, you can think of this like this is basically an enum. So this is why enums are nice. Um, that looks pretty good. We can just add that to the sub view now. Uh, symptom sub text view. Now let's try positioning it. Uh, I think that we see 11 and 11. This is like 368, 343. Uh, I think it'd just be best if we just center this. Uh, don't actually do this on the homework, but we'll just simplify things. Uh, we'll center this to the middle of the background view. Uh, so we'll do layout constraint dot activate. Uh, let's get this. This is symptoms text view. So to actually center it in the middle of something, you can do center.x anchor, constrain it to, uh, you want it to be to the background view, center x anchor, and no constant because we're just centering it. And then because we want to do the same thing for the y, just copy this and switch the x to a y. Get rid of the comma. Uh, I don't think you have to, but it's a style choice. Let's try this and it's not there. Uh, we forgot to do something, translates auto resizing mask. That's the first thing your mind should go to if it's not showing up, unless you set, oh, unless you set up your uh, constraints incorrectly, right? You want to be checking this always. Uh, okay, we'll start this again and it's still not there. So what's up with this? Um, okay, wait, here's a, a little thing. Okay, so a UI label works without having to explicitly set its constraints. A UI text view probably does not. So let's actually set 
its constraints. So we centered the below. Now let's set its width and height. So let's just use the ones that are on Figma. Uh, do 338. Uh, symptoms text view dot. Uh, that's the width. So we want the width anchor to be equal to, and we want to be equal to some constant this time because we want to be equal to 338. So let's just do this and get rid of pixels. We don't want that. And now do the same thing with the height anchor. Uh, 338, we want this to be 125. All right, let's try and see if that works. That's much better. Okay. Uh, it doesn't actually look like how it looks like on Figma. That's fine. Figma has some like line height and some size. Uh, it's really hard to get text to look like how it looks like on Figma. So this is enough for our purposes. Um, but now let's actually make the button. Let's get started with that. Um, so the button again uh, is an oval shape. Looks like it's 25 pixels. It has some text inside it. So uh, buttons have uh, some extra some extra attributes that we need to access. It has some setters and getters, or some setters that we're going to want to use. So it's not as intuitive. Um, let's call this the COVID button. This is a UI button. Uh, OK. And parentheses. Cool. Uh, OK, we'll do it after this. So COVID button, what's special about this? Uh, so I want to set his background color. We can try doing that first and we'll see what happens. So I want to get his color. I'm going to click. This is a group. So either I double click on the blue or just clicking on the on the text. I need to zoom in. I'll just click on the rectangle and I'll get this here. So let's set his UI color to let's try 59 divided by 255. 102 divided by 255. And this. And let's just see if we got the color of it right. Cool. And now let's set as constraints. Before I set constraints, might as well just do this so we don't get an issue anymore. Always make sure to do translate auto resizing mask into constraints. And now let's activate this. Autocomplete is super nice. You don't have to type anything. Uh, now, uh, instead of constraining it from the top of our background view, it makes more sense to start from the bottom. So uh, looks like I'll do it. I'll offset it minus 20 from the bottom. And I'm going to center it on the X. And the last thing we're missing is the height of the button. So. Uh, because if we center it, right, we're, we're good on, oh, actually, no, if we want to center, we also need to set the width. So we need to make sure to do that. Although if we center it, the issue is that if my screen gets wider, then this button is going to stay the, si uh, stay the same size if I set its width explicitly. So in this case, it would be nicer if I were to set its leading and trailing to be 70. Uh, we'll just do 70 for both. Uh, and that's because if I were to stretch it, it's going to still be relative 70. And the only way to do that is to increase its width. So you need to think about those uh, constraint choices when actually doing your constraints. Uh, so let's start with the bottom anchor. Uh, we're going to do, um, it was called COVID button. We're going to do bottom anchor uh, and we're going to constrain it off the background views bottom anchor and now it's negative 20 off remember that if we're trying to go up it's going to be negative because we're doing an inset not an offset uh and now we want to set its leading or covid button leading anchor constraint now this is going to be equal to the background views leading constraint and this constant is going to be 70. And we can do the same thing for trailing anchor. 
And now the last thing we're missing, we have the leading the trailing, we have the bottom, but we don't know how high it is. So let's set the height because that's fine. We don't want it to actually stretch up if we're like making the phone longer, right? That make the button look weird. That's why we have to explicitly set its height. So let's do this. Uh, we're going to constrain it. How high is it? It's 46 pixels. Cool, and let's put a comma here. So let's try this and see what it looks like. And okay, uh, what's up with this? Uh, okay, 70 and 70. Uh, that meant I constrained it 70 to the right. We need to put a negative sign, otherwise it's not gonna work because we want to constrain it towards the left. Good. Um, so this looks fine. Uh, let's actually add the radius now. Uh, so let's do COVID button. We want its later layer corner radius equal to 25. Let's check this out. Okay, looks good. Um, now let's actually set the text. Uh, so to set the text of a button, uh, we can try COVID button dot set. And when you do set, you'll see a bunch of these. So we can do set title and we can just set it to be, uh, okay, press if you don't have COVID. So press if you don't have COVID. And we want that to be in the state. Now UI control dot state is a enum. We do dot and then we'll get all the states. We want it to be in its normal state. That means it's not being pressed. Uh, we can run this and check it out. Okay, uh, looks a little bit too big. So what font size is this? That's 15. So COVID button dot set, let's double check and set. Uh, and it is white, so we don't have to set the title color. Um, let's try getting its title label. And we want to set the font equal to UI system or UI font, that system font of size that says 15. Let's try this again. That looks better. Looking pretty similar. Okay. Uh, and yeah, uh, that looks pretty good. I think we have this section pretty complete. Uh, now, the last thing we want to do is when we press the button, we want to turn the background color uh, this shade of green. And we also want this image up here to show up. So basically to make this image like show up when you press the button, you it's gonna be, it's technically gonna be here, but let's just make it transparent for now. And we'll make it untransparent when uh, we press the button. So how about let's just set this over here just so we know that uh, we'll access it later. Uh, so let's just get the button to be, uh, the image to be there. Um, and to do that, let's see, uh, it's an image. So we need to use an image view. Uh, so let's do check mark, like check mark image view. And we'll make that equal to UI image view. Uh, okay. So check mark image view. Uh, we'll set this. Let's see. Uh, so to make it hidden, right? Or we will make it hidden now but we're gonna to want to make it is hidden and that's equal to true, right? I'll comment this out for now, but we're going to put that eventually. And let's also just add it to the sub view because we're gonna do that anyways. So the important thing with a check mark view is you want to set its image equal to a UI image. And this is going to be named, what exactly, right? We don't have the image here. So let's export this. Uh, so to export on Figma, let's try, I don't think you can export from here. Uh, you should be able to export on the homework, uh, but I'd go on design here, export, and I'll export image one. I'll put this in downloads, I'll call it check mark. There we go. So here we go, we have it here, let's drag it here. Uh, click here and go on assets. I'm going to want to drag this into here. Nope, not as the app icon. Let's undo that. Uh, 
drag into here. Good. All right. So that's where we want it. Uh, now we have the image, and whenever we want to access the UI image named something, this is the name that it's going to refer to, whatever you have a name that's here. So let's go back and it's name check mark. Uh, let's just run this and see what happens. And nothing appears. I think it's because I didn't. Well, first of all, um, once again, always forget this. Okay. Now we should maybe see something. Uh, here we go. Yeah. So uh, because you set an image, that image has a size to it, right? And that's the width and height that it's going to assume. So you can always experiment with constraints. I did it myself because I wasn't sure, but it looks like it does take the image size. So all of these are. Uh, constraints and anchors like this is something it's experiment with and get a feel with uh so it looks like it's here uh i can actually click here again and check it out so uh again it's not constrained so it's like above the safe area layout guide but if i look at it okay uh, i want to move it over here now so let's click here to resume app execution and uh it's actually constrained over there. So let's go down here. I'll do one more endless layout constraint. Activate this. Um, okay, so this is called a checkmark image view. Uh, okay, so I want to, let's go back to the Figma. It is, oh, and uh, another thing, if, oh, you'll be on the spec mode, so I should show easily. But if you're on design mode on Figma, if you hold option, it shows you the, the offset. So on inspect, they'll show it to me automatically. It's 20 from the top and 20 from the side. And because it looks like uh, it's already, it already has a width and a height, uh, we just have to set the, the top and the trailing anchors constraints. So let's get, it was, I keep forgetting what it's called, check mark image view, top anchor, and I want to constrain train it off the top of my background view. Okay, uh, let's see, this is 20 away. This is top to bottom, so 20 is the right direction. And then check mark image view, I want its trailing anchor to be constrained off of the background views trailing anchor. This is to the left, so this is minus 20. Let's run this and check it out. Good, that looks fine. So because it's there, I'm going to now set this to B is hidden, right? And now what we want to happen is when I press this button, I want the screen to turn that light shade of green and I want to make that is hidden property of the checkmark image view false. So how do we actually press a button and get it to do something? Well, there is one attribute that uh, UI buttons have, and it is hat target. So when you hit enter, you're going to see three things. You're going to see the target, the action that it does, and for what event, right? So what is this target? Uh, what am I pressing? I'm pressing itself. So I'm just going to do self. Uh, this is actually what's going to be passed into the function, although uh, we don't need to do anything with this button. So we'll just omit those details. Um, now we want to do for selector, uh, whenever you're doing a selector, you need to do hashtag selector and just hit enter. And I was asking for an objective C method. That's what obj C means. And this is because, uh, whenever you want to add, add target, this is like objective C stuff. So whenever, oh, and what I want to do here is I want to pass in the method, right? So I just make a function, right? Uh, this is after setting constraints. So I want, let's say, uh, Whenever I press this, I want everything to turn green, right? So let's say, uh, what do they call it? Whenever you're in green mode, whatever, just turn on green mode. Okay. And then I want my function to be like this. If I were to do turn on green mode here, it should give me an issue. And that's because 
it says that it's not exposed to Objective-C, so you need to do, you need to add an at Objective-C after it. I can just click fix. Sometimes these know what to do, right? And here it is, right? So every time you're making a target function, just do, just type in at Objective-C before it. The compiler should catch that for you and provide a fix. Now, when do we want to actually uh, activate this function? So if I press dot, there are lots of ways to interact with buttons, right? And the interaction that we want is when I press the button and I'm holding down on it, it's only going to activate as soon as I let go on the button. And that is touch up inside. There's a touch up outside where I press the button, I move it out of the screen and I move it outside of the bounds of the button and I let go, right? But I want it to be inside of, this, of the button. So I'll do this. And now, uh, if I were to just say I print something in here, uh, hello world, uh, let's run this and just see if it's actually calling this. So I press this, the console just popped up and I see hello world every time I press this. So again, I click and I let go and it appeared. So it only appears when I let go. Uh, and that'd be equivalent to like a tap on the screen when you let go of the screen. So what did I want to do in here? I wanted to make the check mark image view to stop being hidden. So this is false. And now I want the background views uh, color to be this light shade of green. So here it is, 244, 250, and 240. So let's get the background view. Uh, this background color is equal to UI color. I want to initialize it to 244 divided by 255. And I can press tab to go on to these CG float. Those are like little stubs that X, um, Xcode puts in for you. This next one is 250 divided by 255, tab uh, 240 divided by 255, tab and one. So I click here. Let's try this. So I click here. Let go, and oh, would you look at that? So here's the little thing. The text view didn't actually change color. So how about we change text view too? Text view, one is background color to be equal to the same thing too. Let's actually try something. How about we make it clear? So it's just gonna be transparent. Let's see what that does. Okay, that also worked. So uh, there we have it. We just implemented this app. This is gonna be very similar to how you actually do the first homework and just the homeworks after that, because all you're doing is offsetting uh, and Figma is gonna be very useful. It's gonna tell you the value straight up what you need to do. So yeah, that's about it with this demo. Uh, and yeah, I covered everything. So let's go back to the presentation. Let's move this down and hit play. So, uh, once again, just make sure you're enrolled if you haven't enrolled yet. And if you are enrolled and you have not joined the Slack or have not been invited to the CMS, please email us. Uh, I'm going to release project two. It's going to be on the website. Uh, it's going to be a Figma. All the instructions are on the Figma and this is going to be due next week. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching the lecture. Uh, good luck on the project and see you next time.